this because I turned this building into a giant cat for free. Well, almost. I'll explain. So I've always thought that those two windows and this balcony kind of look like a giant mouth. So this year for Halloween, I'm going to make it into a giant cat face. Okay, we are here in my office, and this is my wife's office next door. Each of these lights is an individually controllable WS2811 or WS2812 controller. These are on a printed circuit board here. Each of these lights can be controlled individually to be any color at any time. We've soldered them with this uh, XT60 connector, useful in drones and things, so we can provide all of them power very simply. And they also come in Christmas light form for these guys down here. So the pixels around the eyes are going to be a strand of 300 as well as this one here. So there's 600 lights plus another 300 across the whisker line. And then each of these is going to be 100 lights. So that's a grand total of 1100 lights, which would be a little expensive if we were buying them all from scratch. Fortunately, I've inherited all these pixels and power supplies from previous gigs that didn't pay in money but did pay in equipment. So we're going to use all these. So in order to run all these lights together, we're going to need a microcontroller in this room to control these LEDs, a different one in this room, and a completely different one outside in the balcony because there's no way we can get one wire across to all these three places at the same time. In order to do that, we're going to use the built-in Wi-Fi of this, the ESP32, or this is actually an 8266, the slightly older but almost identical board. Anyway, this board runs a signal to this logic level shifter, which shifts it from the 3.3 volts of the microcontroller to the five volts that the lights need to work. So if we have one of these guys, Wi-Fi connected and Wi-Fi connected and Wi-Fi connected, we should be able to run all the lights and synchronize them across our network. So let's build it. All right, so we've got our LEDs run all along the windowsill here, up and across. We've got our giant cat eyes, nice and sparkly, beautiful, love it, love it. And these are just plugged into a regular, ordinary uh, electrical socket, which is plugged into our DMX box, which is how we get our eyes to be lit up at different times. Here's mine and my wife's office. And this I got from a different theater company for doing a different show that they didn't pay me for. But I got this, so that's great. And that is plugged into this. This is a DMX controller, which allows us to go USB in here and talk to the computer over two universes of DMX if we wanted to. But we're just using one right now. So that DMX line goes out into the back of here. So this is controllable and that is talking to this guy. And that is sending a line out into the other office where we can tell the other office to be whatever color that we want for the background. And all of our LEDs here are being controlled by this ESP32. This one has wired internet in addition to wireless internet. And the breadboard here is the exact same circuit as the other one, just a little messier, but just as functional. We have that plugged into our power supply here. And in this case, our power supply is also powering our ESP32, so we don't need a separate power supply for that. That's really convenient. Now the physical connections are great, but we also need some software running on this guy. And that's going to be WLED, so let's take a look at that. This is the WLED project, or WLED as I like to call it. It's a bunch of ESP32 controllers for many different types of pixels with lots of different features, an integrated web controller. You can add it to your home device if you want, control it over any of these wonderful protocols. We're gonna be using this one specifically, E131 and has a handy dandy little web interface and everything and incredibly helpful presets for animations. Installing is as simple as going to the GitHub, download the latest release, find your appropriate version and upload it to your controller. And then you'll be able to connect to it and have this cool little interface. So 
This is what allows us to set up our LEDs in any kind of configuration. In our case, we have 300 total pixels here of the WS2811 type variety. And these particular ones are in the GRB, but yours might be different. And that is all we need to set up and to start changing some colors. So if we wanted to go to uh, yellow amberish here or deep reddish purple. So making them any color is cool. We like that, but we want to make them all different colors. And for that, we can go to our effects and choose any one of these presets, like this blends here. There's also things like this, which just blinks on and off, the bouncing balls effect, one of my favorites. And each one of these has parameters that you can adjust to control different parts of the timing or other effects that it has. And this is just a big list of different things. If we like one, we can come save it to a favorite preset here. This is cool. I don't know what this is, but that's cool. Save that. And so now we can jump to that or this other preset that I've made, which also looks very cool. We still need something to tell this whole device what to do at any given moment. And for that, we're going to need another program called X lights normally used for Christmas shows, but can be used for anything that you put your imagination to download the latest version for your machine of choice, install it and we open X lights. So this is not an X lights tutorial. There are many of those online. I highly recommend checking them out in brief. Here's our DMX controller that we have set up. This is plugged into my computer here. And these other ones are network devices. They're all showing up on the network. So I've already configured this to be a WLED device that's on a generic ESP type 32 or 8266. And here's its IP address. And we can, in terms of sending the information, the default is E131, but DDP is slightly faster. And these are just two different ways of sending DMX information over a network. Um, this is slightly more efficient, so we're going to keep our traffic down a little bit. Save that and make sure that when we configure this, we are also set to do the same. So now x -Lights knows where to find each of these controllers. Now we need to lay out all our models. Here's a photo I took of the exterior of our building. Five hours later. I have set up all of these guys to be or more or less exactly how they are set up in the real world our strands here. This is the par can that's just going to be giving this whole area a wash of color. Here's the cat eye from Target. Same thing in this other room. Uh, our whisker line, a line of 300 LEDs here. The uh, smile is going to be just the same. 100 here and 100 there. So that's all our lights set up and we have them set into groups so we can program things separately. So if we wanted to program all the lights, they're set up in a group as well as just the eyes, just the right eye, the whisker line, the middle, the left eye and the bottom mouth. So we can send something to an effect to just one of those channels if we want. That will allow us to create a lot more effects and to layer things in interesting ways. Oh, and we can also turn on the 3D preview to see how it looks in 3D. Ooh, spooky. So all these things, we can zoom in and out and change our perspective and move around and see this show from wherever we want to see. It's much more convenient than moving around in the real world. Now it's just a matter of sequencing. Here we have our timeline, which represents our song that we're syncing it to, the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. And each of these is one of the layers that we have set up and an effect, one of these effects running on the entire thing. So for example, this is running on our all group, so it should show up on everything, this fire that builds slowly from the bottom to the top. And that's great. So I've already preset these. These vertical lines represent timing markers that I have set to the song that can also be done somewhat automatically with uh, different filters and things, but that's another topic for another day. For right now, I've just made all these marks manually. So it goes through and plays all of these things in time. 
So now we can check what that looks like. If we peek back at our effect and we output it to the lights, our WLED control now says it's receiving live DDP data from our IP address, which is great. We could override this if we want, but we don't. We wanna see what that looks like, so that's good. So back in our X lights, and now if we select this, there it goes, lighting up with the effect. And we can preview the whole show like this. If this is all working correctly, that behind me should be this left eyebrow here. And it's also going backwards. Oh, that's why. Wait. No, that's still backwards. Here it is. Reverse that one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I've set up a camera outside so we can see what's going on and compare it against our digital model here. So let's test it. Looks pretty good from here. Let's go outside and see it. Yes. Mm-hmm, and the strobing windows. Yeah. So good. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This has been so much fun to put together, but it's been so much work as well. So I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon sponsors. They're the ones who really allow me to keep doing stuff like this. So if you like what you see, please go to patreon.com slash harpo. There you can find more about me and get access to my entire catalog of music. Plus, you can see more of the other tech projects that I work on, including some open source live looping software. So definitely check that out. Uh, yeah, and let me know in the comments what you think of this or if you think of other projects that I should be working on. I would love to hear about it. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.